Good afternoon, and welcome to my regular time uh, for my daily Facebook Live, and be on YouTube later on, I'll tell you about that at the end. Um, this is episode number 669, so we're cruising through to 700 apparently, well, that's the way it's going. Um, so the topic today is um, yearn chasing love, yearning for love, desperate for love. There's another way of doing it. I'm actually, <laughs> I'll actually, the title and hurry and put it in. So anyway, bottom line is it's chasing love the wrong way isn't going to work. I'll give it a solution for you. And I put the end of it no falling because today's April 1st, although officially gags and tricks and pranks end at noon. After that, it's broken the rules, apparently. Anyway, so um, with that, let me introduce myself so you know what I'm about and get you into the topic. So my name is Barry Selby. In case you already figured that out. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and I help women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which is what inspires my work and also what inspires these talks, uh, which are actually officially called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. I've been doing these now for over two years, which is why I'm at episode number 669, a lot of these. And again, the topic today is around the area of love, as in chasing, yearning, desperate for, and how it's the wrong approach. And also, I'm um, going to give you some answers and solutions as well. So welcome, come on in. If you want to comment, please feel free to do so. If you want to share it out with people, we'll do that as well. Um, in case you haven't seen me before, this is a Facebook Live I do at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day. That I also put onto YouTube later on, so you may be watching it there. And every one of them is meant to be, or intended to be, and usually is, some form of inspiration, support, and help for your health around relationships, your health around your purpose, or health around living fully in your life. And you're welcome. Um, so today's topic is again about love in the chase, looking for love in all the wrong places, chasing love in all the wrong places, and yearning for love in all the wrong places, and desperate too. So rather than just keep preamp, re repeating the title, let me just jump into this. I'm just reflecting on yesterday's experience. I was uh, luck, lucky enough, happy enough, blessed enough, uh, located enough to hang out with Dr. Sue Morder, who's one of my dear friends. Dr. Sue Morder has a new book that just came out called The Energy Codes, um, and she is a master teacher about supporting us, supporting ourselves and connecting to our spiritual health and, and spiritual well-being and everything else. There's also some key things in there that talks about how love is the answer and love is the cure. And as a doctor, that's kind of cool to hear that. I mean, she's a very forward-thinking doctor, to say the least. But I was having a conversation with friends of mine um, during the afternoon, because she, she was at a, it was a guppy yesterday. She was leading both services and she did a workshop in the afternoon. So we had a full day of immersion with Dr. Sue Morder, which was wonderful. And something I took away, which is a reminder actually, not so much something I knew, was about how much we keep searching out there. And this is one of the things that we've been trained to do in this culture. You know, this, this society, this world, this way of being, is we're always thought, well, the next best thing's out there somewhere. We keep looking, keep searching, we'll find what we're looking for, somebody will shop to save the day and we'll be okay. That sort of framework. And it's true around all sorts of areas, whether it's, going, whether it's cars or jobs or, or travel or relationships or love. We keep putting our energy out there for it to happen. We put our, we put our focus out there for it to happen. You know I'm going somewhere else with this. In all of this work, and this is something she talked about, how um, Sue talked about yesterday, it's like, you know, the area about we're looking for something out there, when the reality is just right here. Meaning that all that we seek and all we're looking for, all we're searching for, we're desperate for, hungry for, yearning for, etc., 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 is because we're vacating ourselves. Yes, we're vacating ourselves. We're not actually spending time in our beingness, owning who we really are. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna expand a little bit more metaphysical for a moment, spiritual maybe even, to include in this this viewpoint, to explain that you, me, we are all whole and complete as much as you may not believe that um, it took me a while to get to that point of understanding too and I forget at times too just to be totally transparent but we are whole and complete as we are meaning that we don't need anything from anybody else I know that might shatter some illusions for some people because some people say yeah but I need this person in my life I need this job in my life I need this money in my life I need this whatever it is you don't yeah, there's some things you need functionally to live in the world, like food and water and, and air, stuff like that. But in terms of those other things, beyond the, the necessities of survival, let's be clear about that, to be blunt, a relationship is not part of the requirement for survival. 
And you're going, but I need a relationship. Well, maybe, but maybe you need a better relationship with yourself. And I'm not denying relationships. I mean, my work has been about being a relationship coach, so I'm not a, I'm actually pro relationships, very much so about helping you get that. But the reality is that we don't need that. And the truth, actually a couple of things to do with that. Okay, there's that piece. All right, I'll come back to this piece in a moment. Let me go over this one for a second. So we are, again, culturally educated or culturally entrained or culturally fooled, maybe a better way of putting it, since April Fool's Day, fooled into thinking that somehow we won't be complete unless somebody else loves us. Not only that they only love us, but that we must be satisfied because they're out there and they're gonna bring it to us and we need to have like that connection of amazing love and relationships. And again, I am not against relationships. I'm very much pro relationships. So I'll make sure you get that clear. If you're watching my broadcast, you know that's true for me. But what I'm also aware of is that when we think that it's the other person's job, their requirement, their responsibility to love us so we feel loved, that's where you walk on very, very um, shaky ground. I'm not going to go down the whole talk about codependence because I've done that before, but I'll just give you a couple of insights into it. Codependence, I mentioned, by the way. Yes, codependence is one of those wonderful words that describes a <laughs> an imbalance in the force. Um, it, <laughs> it actually is a reminder that what's happening is we are continually thinking that somebody else is going to make us feel okay. Feel loved, feel supported, feel safe, feel, appro feel appreciated, feel approved of, feel... In, um, encourage whatever that is and by putting that onus on somebody else you're giving them all your responsibility to make you feel good that's a lot of pressure and if somebody does it to you that's a lot of pressure on you too and this dance of relationship this um, dysfunctional dance of relationship is why, where a lot of people get into trouble because they continually put pressure on somebody else to love them and when they don't get loved the way they want or approved of or accepted or appreciated whatever that is they will basically shout at them yell at them judge them argue with them pout about them withhold sex all those different things but the reality is what's happening is the person you're given the control to you're given the puppet strings to as well When you don't take responsibility for your own love, when you don't take ownership of your own self, when you don't take honoring yourself back to who you are, and you give it to somebody else, you're saying, please control my feelings. That's what you're saying. Because if you are waiting for somebody else to love you to make you feel okay, if they don't love you, you won't feel okay. That's a control, that's a right straight line from you wanting to feel okay to them loving you or not, which is basically giving them the power. And in most relationships, that is not a healthy choice. And the codependent model, which is what this is, is basically doing, is putting you into a place where you are never in control of your own feelings. Now, do you want that? I don't think so. Truly, you want to be able to love yourself and feel supportive and happy in who you are, independent of everything else. The, the real truth I teach a lot in my work, in my coaching with my clients, especially for relationships, is how can you be so fully embodying who you are that you fill up with your own love, you fill up your own support, you fill up with your own joy, so that you're not dependent upon somebody else. You could love somebody else, and a healthy relationship, by the way, is absolutely where two whole beings who love themselves can then love each other. That's one of my teachings and one of my work. Because I've learned the lesson more times than I can count of how it doesn't work the other way. Yes, personally, I've been through that. But learning how to love yourself first and then love somebody else is a much healthier approach to relationship. So that's that side. Let me go to this side now. This part is the piece about self-love. Because I've... <laughs> I've been pedantic about this for quite a while. If you have, if you've watched my broadcast, you know this. And if you haven't watched my broadcast, this will be a reminder, or a new reminder, or a new support for you. Self-love is an absolutely fundamental, required way of living life successfully. Not just in a relationship, but success in all areas of life. It has to have as part of its component tree and part of its resource, you loving you. When you don't do that, everything outside becomes very um, two-dimensional. In fact, nothing out there will please you enough 
because it's trying to fill up the gap you can't fill with it. It's got to be the self-love that fills you up first. Even somebody else loving you will never fill you up fully because as soon as they leave and take the love with them, you're without love again, which is no fun. Again, that's the codependent side. So getting back to the other piece, which is the self-love piece, the benefit of loving yourself is that one, you break the codependent cycle because when you love yourself, you don't give them the puppet strings. You actually own them yourself. You can actually manage and control your own feelings, your own choices, your own relationship, participation. And when things don't work, you can leave without feeling somehow guilty because you love yourself enough to honor yourself. See, self-love is a key to a lot of other things. That's why I'm actually in the process of creating a new uh, group program that's not self-love only, but it's like everything starts there. And when I've been writing about it and, and making notes about this, pro this course, every single one of the aspects, there's 13 right now, it's probably gonna be more, we'll see. All of them come back to self-love. It's almost like automatic. And I just look at it and go, of course. So for me, it's such an obvious source, but a lot of people don't get that. The thing about self-love, as it sounds so easy, oh yeah, I love myself, it's fine. But the truth is when you do love yourself fully, all the other spokes which I'm looking at in, the, in this coursework I'm creating, all of them become effective. Without self-love, they're hollow. They have no juice, they have no drive, they just don't have the power. So self-love is the cornerstone, it's the keystone for everything. And so, I mean, I created a self-love uh, self practice, a guided meditation, an AMPM audio meditation with everything else, which is, I created because the clients needed it. And, and it's on my website, I'll give you the link afterwards and put it in the comments so you can actually check it out for yourself. And if you really want it and, and you find yourself challenged financially, which may be possible, I don't, I don't think it's that expensive, but if you need a challenge, send me a message and I actually put a link in the comments for, a, a, for contacting me so you can actually reach out and say, I want it, but, and be okay with it. I'm fine with you telling me that. But the thing I want to say is, however you do it, self-love is an absolutely fundamental skill, a fundamental tool, a fundamental, fundamental um, way of being that will change your life for the better. So you no longer are desperate for love because it comes from inside. You're no longer yearning for love because you're already filled up. You're no longer chasing love because it's already inside of you. And when you go meet somebody else, you find a mirror matching of love to come to you. You want a healthy relationship? Love yourself first, and then meet somebody else who loves you in the same way. That combination, that pairing of love, it's loving yourself, loving each other, is the way you build a healthy relationship. Self-love is a fundamental um, cornerstone of the work I do, and it's a cornerstone of living life fully. You want a healthy, successful life? Love yourself first. You want to be healthier in life? Love yourself first. I mean, I can keep going like a list of all these love yourself first themes because it really is fundamental. But so many people don't talk about it. I do. So again, I'll put a link in the comments for the self-love practice. You can check it out. And also put a link in the comments for a contact form. You can reach out to me for more support. If you're finding yourself even challenged of how to find a way to love yourself, that my self-love practice may not be impactful enough for you. I think it's pretty effective. Also use my contact form to reach out to me and I can offer you some guidance. And in case you hadn't realized, I'm kind of passionate about this. It's why I build my work on, well, it's built on this. Because I go through the lessons myself. This is not some theory that I'm going, you yeah, know, we'd love yourself, you'd be fine. I've actually had some transcendent experiences through various retreats and trainings where I got to see, wrong word, I got to experience and witness and embody what self-love really feels like. And yeah, I forget at times. I'm human like we all are in some sense. Well, spiritual being having a human experience. But the truth of it is, is that when we remember to love ourselves, which is a do it more often than you forget, then life becomes an amazing journey. I think I made my point. Um, I appreciate you watching and I definitely appreciate you being with me in this broadcast. If you have questions about this, again, you can put them below in the comments and I'll respond when I sign off. I'll put the links in the comments after I sign off as well so you can check them out. If you want to share it with anybody, feel free. Um, you may want to put a little explainer on the top of it, by the way. So with that, I thank you for watching. As always, this is my daily Facebook Live. Um, every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, usually 5 p.m. I go live and do a little talk about something in particular, about relationship, love, and lately about women's empowerment and women's inspiration, because that seems to be what's coming up with my work now, or part of my work. And uh, I invite you to come check me out. So by the way, the replays, I'll give you the links for those so you can find them if you haven't seen my broadcast before. So if you want to join me live, 5 p.m. Pacific time, my personal page on Facebook is where you find me which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays on Facebook, 
are all over the place, but certainly if you find them on my business page, which is barrysubby.author, and then the replay is also going to my YouTube channel. Go to spread them around. And I have a YouTube channel, which is also Barry Selby. All my social media is my name, Barry Selby. So you can find me easily. Um, except Instagram, there's a whole problem with that. That's not gonna, I'm not gonna go into that here. But anyway, so on YouTube, if you subscribe to, subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine, where all of these live. And you can go through and find a title that speaks to you and watch it, and then add your comments there. So with that, I thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me, and I hope this has been an inspiration, support, and maybe an encouragement to you. No falling, self-love is the way to go. I'll see you again tomorrow. You take care of yourselves and uh, enjoy. Bye.